Hello dear students, I am Kavi Shri, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, SVS College, Bantwal. In this video, we are going to discuss about circulation which comes under Unit 2 of Physiology under the paper 3, Physiology, Biochemistry and Immunology. So, under this topic, we are going to learn about types of circulation, structure, function and regulation of human heart, origin and conduction of heartbeat, blood pressure in that hypertension and hypotension, composition of human blood which includes plasma, erythrocytes, leukocytes and platelets and the last one is neurogenic and myogenic heart. So all of us we have basic knowledge of human circulatory system right. So we all know what circulatory system does. So it circulates different substances throughout the body. So why uh, it has to circulate? Because all the cells of our body require constant nutrition and waste removal since they are metabolically active, right? So whenever we talk about circulatory system, the first thing come into our mind is blood. So blood is a fluid which flows throughout the body and that is how it helps to transport substances from one part of the body to the another. So in general we can say that internal transport in animals is facilitated by circulatory system. So each and every organism which is living needs all the minerals, nutrients, water and whatever required for their survival which has to be transported to each and every part of the body. For that transportation circulatory system is very important. Now the question is what do they transport? They transport oxygen, water, food, hormones etc to different parts of the body. So if you look at these all are essential for the survival of life. You need oxygen to survive, you need water to survive, you need food to survive. So these should reach to each and every body parts because every cell of our body need them. Now let us discuss with the definition of circulation. Circulation is the transport of nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide and excretory products to the concerned tissues or organs. For circulation in simple organism like uh, sponges and cylindrates, they use water from surrounding because there the water act as surrounding medium. But in complex organism, it uses body fluids like blood and lymph for circulation. So now let us see types of circulatory system. So animal possess two types of circulatory system. First one is open type and second one is closed type. The difference between these two are in case of open type of um, circulatory system, the blood or fluid which comes out of the blood vessels and the tissues are bathed in the blood. Whereas in case of closed circulatory system, blood never comes out of blood vessels. So suppose if you consider this as a heart, this is a heart and these are blood vessels, these are blood vessels, okay and consider this as organism and here the tissues and organs are bathed in the blood okay so now what happens here is the blood vessels see this which opens into okay so these blood vessels opens into a large space which is known as okay this is known as sinus this is known as sinus so the blood get filled here and in this sinus there will be presence of organs so what happens here the exchange takes place directly between blood and this organ clear i repeat in open circulatory system 
the blood vessels which directly opens into large space which is known as sinus so the blood will get filled here the exchange takes place directly between blood and this or organ <coughs> so here the blood fluid is called as hemolymph let us see what happens in case of closed circulatory system so here the blood never comes out from the blood vessel suppose here if you take if you take this as artery and consider these as cap capillary sorry this is capillary and consider this as vein so arteries are those which takes the blood inside and veins are those which carries the blood outside so here what happens is so blood is brought by these blood vessels and the blood vessel will um, divided into fine branches which is called as capillaries and they join to form vein here consider this as tissue okay so here exchange of gases or nutrients takes place from the capillary to the tissue and from the tissue to the capillary okay so here blood never comes out from blood vessels i repeat so open circulatory system here the blood pumped by the heart passes through large vessels into open space or cavities called as sinuses for example arthropods molluscans i can consider leech etc and whereas closed circulatory system here blood pumped by the heart and circulated through blood vessels for example annelids and all vertebrates so all higher animals they have closed type of circulatory system okay so we will try to understand by taking example of different types of vertebrates so we'll consider um, complex animals or complex vertebrates like fishes amphibians reptiles aves and mammals so in case of fishes or pisces the heart is two chambered whereas in case of uh, amphibians and um, reptiles heart is three chambered whereas in birds and mammals heart is four chambered and we'll see how the heart forms here now in fishes or pisces okay as i mentioned heart is two chamber okay consider this as heart upper chamber is auricles lower chamber is ventricle so in fishes gills are present right what is the function of gill so gills helps in respiration so here heart pumps the blood it actually pumps deoxygenated blood okay deoxygenated blood and the gills in the gills exchange of gases takes place it releases a deoxygenated or carbon dioxide and which takes up the oxygen here and the oxygen which is taken to the tissue so this is the tissue and from the tissue the deoxygenated blood or carbon dioxide which again reaches to the heart and this is how heart now you know circulation takes place clear i repeat so in heart there are two chamber auricular and ventricular so initially heart pumps you know deoxygenated blood which um, carried out from the tissue as a waste product and this deoxygenated blood reaches to the gills where exchange of gases takes place the deoxygenated blood become oxygenate and this oxygenated blood reaches to the tissues 
and tissues will utilize for their you know metabolic activity and it releases carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide and the uh, deoxygenated blood again reaches to the heart and the cycle repeats but here only single circulation takes place because blood is circulating only one time clear okay so in case of amphibians and reptiles in case of amphibians and reptiles as i mentioned heart is three chamber we'll try to understand this using a rough diagram it is three chambered right auricle this is right auricle this is left auricle and this is ventricle sorry this is ventricle so here what happens is always right side of the heart which receives deoxygenated blood okay so this always receives deoxygenated blood whereas left side of the heart which always receives oxygenated blood okay so this deoxygenated blood when it reaches to the right auricle then it gets pumped to the ventricle from the ventricle now the deoxygenated blood has to convert into oxygenated blood whose work is this so this is done by respiratory organ if in such animal if there is lung so it is done by lung for example i write here lungs okay now so in the lung uh, blood gets you know converted to oxygenated and now oxygenated blood will enter into left auricle then into ventricle and the oxygenated blood which reaches to the tissue so tissues uses oxygenated blood for its metabolic activity and it releases deoxygenated blood and this deoxygenated blood again enter into right auricle and this is how the circulation takes place but the thing is here in the ventricle the blood gets you know mixed up but here double circulation occur because blood is circulating twice hence it is called as incomplete type of circulation so in case of apes and mammals in case of apes and mammals there are four chambered heart i'll draw here four chambered heart right auricle left auricle right ventricle and left ventricle as i mentioned right side of the heart which receives deoxygenated blood okay left side of the heart which receives oxygenated blood okay so the deoxygenated blood reaches to the right auricle then it transfer into right ventricle from the right ventricle where it has to transfer so now the deoxygenated blood gets oxygenated so oxy addition of blood takes place in the lungs in the lungs the blood gets oxidized and the oxygenated blood again enter into left auricle then to left ventricle and from the left ventricle the oxygenated blood which reaches into the tissue where uh, it uses oxygen for its metabolic activity and then it releases deoxygenated blood or carbon dioxide it again reaches to the right auricle and the cycle repeats clear here double circulation takes place and the circulation is complete so this is what happens in case of human beings also so we will study about double circulation in detail in the next video so next we will discuss with the human circulatory system so as i mentioned the general functions of circulatory system which helps in transport okay they transport the food and oxygen from the digestive and respiratory system and deliver them to the cells because cell require these you know food and oxygen 
they transport waste products and carbon dioxide from the cell and deliver them to kidneys and lungs because these waste product has to release out from the body they also transport hormones and other chemicals enzymes etc throughout the body second function is homeostasis they maintain fluid and electrolyte balance in the tissues and cells they also maintain acid or basic balance in tissues and cells they also help to regulate temperature third function is protective function the clotting and inflammation prevents excessive blood loss and limit the spread of infection second one is circulating cells and chemicals which actively seek out and remove pathogens from the body and this is considered as one of the immunological function now let us discuss with the human circulatory system and its division human circulatory system it is mainly divided into two blood vascular system and lymphatic system the blood vascular system it is again divided into three they are heart blood and blood vessel now the blood includes plasma and formed elements so formed elements are of three types rbc that is red blood cell wbc white blood cell and platelets the white blood cells are of two types granulocytes and agranulocytes granulocytes includes neutrophils eosinophils and basophils whereas agranulocytes includes lymphocytes and monocytes there are two types of lymphocytes b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes whereas blood vessels includes arteries veins and capillaries and the second uh, part that is lymphatic system includes lymph lymph vessels and lymphatic nodes hope you understood the video from the next video we will start with the structure of human heart thank you